hello and welcome to Makeover Mondays. If you want to see how we went from this to this, then definitely stay tuned. Yeah, we serve God around these parts. Uh, Alpha and Omega, he be finished before we start. Uh, the great I am, the one who let us know who we are. Uh, Christ the cardiologist created me a clean heart. Uh, I don't consider nothing this world has showed me because God's word is literal and that ain't what he told me. So, I only use edge control around the front perimeter of her hairline. We use no other gel for this hairstyle. So, with faux locks, you want to create nice medium to large um, plaits. You don't want them too small because then you'd have too many faux locks and your client, their head would look bulky. So... Um, I also would suggest um, starting in the back with just one or two plaits and make sure the, the crochet faux lock um, can attach easily and without any pain or discomfort to your client. Once you know you've got that together, then go ahead and plait the whole head. I was so, I was so anxious to see progress that I plaited and then attached the locks and then pull the plaits through the locks I think it'll be a lot faster to just be patient enough to plait the entire head first and then attach all the locks and then work on pulling the plait through the locks now um, she has long hair and we bought a uh, 14 inch faux locks which were about an inch too short um, for her hair so we made it work but she definitely um, would have benefited from 16 inch for clients whose hair is not as long as as hers um, then this style will go by pretty quickly This hairstyle is good for any season, summer, winter, spring, fall. Um, the locks are so light uh, that it's not terribly hot in the summer. Plus, they can be put up to an updo. So, there we have it. And before the makeup, this is how we started. And we're going to start out with brows. I filled her brows in with a brow pencil. Uh, I didn't show you that just to save time. This video is kind of long. Um, I also want to let you know that the color of concealer that we used is not ideal for her skin tone. Um, she already had cool tan and I picked up uh, Warm Honey in the LA Girl Pro Conceal. But um, I think the best color for her skin tone is Fawn. Uh, but we made it work. It's no big deal. So we're just filling in with pencil and then take the concealer and clean it up. And yes, I clean up top and bottom with concealer. And you'll see me go in with both my finger and a Q-tip to clean up the concealer so that we don't have that halo brow effect. Cause I agree that is absolutely not cute. Her brows are cleaned up pretty well before we start it. You definitely get the best results um, for your eyebrows when you start with freshly groomed brows instead of trying to cover up hair and all that drama. I know a lot of people brush eyebrows upward um, I do not do that. I just brush from the inner corner to the outer corner and like a straight line. That's what works best for me. All right, now that we've 
got these brows together. We're gonna go in on the foundation. She is wearing, um, what is this? Fit Me, Fit Me Foundation, Maybelline. Is Fit Me Maybelline? Anyway, her color is um, coconut. And she's using the dewy one here. She usually uses the matte one. If you're wondering what all that white stuff was on the bottom of her face, um, we didn't have color correctors, so I used that light concealer that we use for highlight um, for dark spots. And that may not have been the best idea, but it all came together. So we're using a Beauty Blender dupe. Uh, just call it a beauty sponge, I guess, to blend her makeup in. Just take your time. Obviously, this video is sped up, but when you're applying your foundation, especially when you're a beginner, give yourself plenty of time. Give yourself like a whole hour to do your makeup um, so that you don't cut corners where it comes to blending. Blending is so important. So take your time. Blend, blend, blend. Get under that jawline and chin by the ears at the hairline. And I did I did um, put foundation as well as the um, concealer on her eyelids to kind of serve as a primer to help keep the shadow on longer. All right, so here we are highlighting. And again, that color is cool tan, but the best color for her skin tone in the LA Girl Pro Conceal would be Fawn. And then I blend that out with a um, one of those disposable wedges, beauty wedge, whatever it's called. All right, and the highlighting helps your face not to be flat after foundation, but it kind of helps bring back some of that natural reflection of light, I, I guess you could say, or the appearance of it anyway. Again, blending is key. Just blend, blend, blend. And we keep adding these layers. All right, so we're gonna set that highlight with, I believe that's a Wet n Wild. I'll put all the products in the description box, but this is a Wet n Wild finishing powder. And I've been impressed with this inexpensive powder. It definitely gets the job done and blends very well. Now, uh, it wasn't until it came time to contour that I realized we didn't have what we needed to contour. So I used a dark shadow. It was the darkest one we could find. And I don't know, it just kind of looked like I was putting black on her face. I wasn't comfortable with it. So I only contoured um, along her jaw or the side of her face, I should say. We didn't do the forehead like I usually would. We definitely didn't do the nose with that color. Uh, it came together nicely. This really turned out to be a very pretty look for her. But um, typically, you know, with a full face, I would have a contour a little better. So we're knocking off the powder. And we're going to ensure that she doesn't have that cakey look by setting the powder with finishing spray. I believe we used, uh, oh, nope, blush is next. After blush, we will use uh, finishing spray. Now we put this blush on pretty heavy for the camera. Kind of have to be a little extra in your makeup when you're filming, but um, it's a great color for her skin tone. There's the finishing spray, that's by Revlon. Setting spray. Ooh, child. Then we had the nerve to go back in with one more spray. Ooh. All right, I started on one eye already. So I was kind of winging it, kind of freestyling with her eyes, but I saw how nice that color was on her skin tone, a lot like the blush. So I ended up putting it on her entire eyelid and then going back in with concealer. I know this is not a cut crease, but we use concealer to lighten up the portion of the lid that I wanted to use light um, shadows on. So that reddish color turned out to be a great base. And then I think that's cool tan. It could be warm honey, but I think it's, yeah, that's the cool tan on her lids. 
so that I could get the color payoff for the light color shadows. If it looks like I'm being rough in the video, it's just because it's sped up. I would never beat on someone's eyes or face like that. All right, now I'm gonna go in and clean up the inner corner, I believe. Am I? What's next? Nope, we went right in with the light colors. Now my model here is very pretty. Um, she started the video out looking pretty homely because she was trying to help me out with my video. <laughs> Makeover Monday. I need people to go from one extreme to the next. <laughs> yeah, she's a beautiful girl. So we just continued. Um, I think I started out with light colors that kind of came off as white-ish. Um, shadows for that inner corner. And I wanted more of a yellow tone or goldish tone. So I continued um, playing with different palettes until I achieved the look that I was pleased with and I did go back with that wider color to set off the innermost corner it's always nice when you put a little shimmer near the tear duct if it seemed like we were really chatty in this video it's because the video was sped up and we're really good friends and so we were having a blast all right so in the next clip you'll see that she has eyeliner and um, mascara on because we did that off camera I completely jacked up her eyeliner and we tried to play it off like I didn't <laughs> I'm a bit of an amateur but this was fun turned out nicely you want to highlight that brow bone right under the brow don't pull your eyeshadow all the way up to the brow save room to add um, a bit of a highlight on the brow bone all right now we're going to do lips we play with three colors um she doesn't have very big lips but she has large enough to work with some people their lips are so small you just want to stick with a color um but we could kind of create an ombre effect here so we started out with the darkest color it's kind of like a raspberry-ish um, on the outside of her lips. And then we moved in a little bit with a, a shade a little lighter than that color. And then we ended up with a very pale color just in the center of her lips. And that created a very nice um, color combo. We used liquid lipstick, um, some kind of lip pencil, and... I'm not even sure what that first thing was, but it had glitter in it, like glitter lipstick. <laughs> it was pretty though. So this is pretty much the makeup look and the hair is done. So now we're going to try to style the hair and I think we're going to put on a cute little outfit. Um, so enjoy the photos. Thank you for tuning in to Makeover Monday on the Dana Lynette channel. Stay tuned. Next Monday, we will have another fun makeover. If you have particular requests, leave them in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. And thank you for commenting, for liking, subscribing, and sharing. Have a great day.